Tonight on News 5 Live, a trio of former law enforcement officers sentenced to 15 years for manslaughter. A midday shooting in Belize City leaves well-known street figure Jervis Valencia injured. News 5 premieres its latest addition to its feature segments. And the Senate takes on the MPO bill. These stories and more coming up on News 5 Live. Smart introduces real unlimited postpaid plans, providing customers with unlimited talk, unlimited text, and unlimited data. Now that's a real great deal. With Smart Plus, Share 1 and 2, and Enterprise 1 and 2 plans, you can talk as much as you want, text as much as you want, and for the first time ever in Belize, you can enjoy unlimited data with your postpaid plan. So come in and sign up for an unlimited postpaid plan and enjoy limitless possibilities. In addition, other plans such as the Flex Junior, Choice and Select have been boosted with a lot more talk, text and data, providing you with the best value for your budget. Be unlimited with SMART. It's time to power your dollar with SMART. Kite flying is fun, but it can also be dangerous. Fly kite safely by following these tips. Never use wire, metallic thread, or wire reinforced strings. You could be electrocuted. Remember, even a safely built kite can cause a power outage if it gets caught in a power line. Always use paper, plastic, or wood to build kites. Never fly kites near power lines, in the path of traffic, aircrafts, or near highways. Always fly kites with a responsible adult, in open areas, in dry weather, and with clear visibility. Never attempt to remove your kite from a power line. Always call BEL at 0800-235-2273 if your kite gets caught in a power line. Belize Electricity Limited. We care about your safety.
safety is a cornerstone of peace of mind. And for a long time, the Belize National Fire Service has been doing our best to help ensure the safety of the Belizean public. We see that there is more we can do. This is why we have embarked on certifying firefighters to also be able to provide emergency medical services to the communities that we have been proudly serving. This means that we can now assist with both fire and medical emergencies with efficient time. We went even further and created the 990 Communication Center, an emergency dispatcher service developed for quick responses to fires, accidents, and health calls. This service is already presently available for the Cairo region. Just dial 990 and the first question you will be asked is, 990, what is the address of your emergency? You see, if we don't know where you are, we can't get you the help you need. Stay on the line and continue to answer the questions of the dispatcher. They will use the Beacon app to give real-time updates to emergency responders as they approach the situation and will be prepared to serve you. The Belize National Fire Service, the U.S. Embassy of Belize, and Belize Heroes have partnered to make emergency medical services available. We ask for the public to partner with us and call 990 for emergencies. You are help until help arrives. My Social Security is your secure online account to manage all your social security information. My Social Security launched in March 2021 with registration service to apply online for new or replacement social security cards. Upgrades to My Social Security continues with a new look, enhanced customer experience and its newest feature, Sickness Benefit Online Application. With My Social Security, you can create your account, log in and take control of your social security information. This includes applying for a new or replacement social security card for yourself, child or dependent, make appointments online and submit your complete sickness benefit claim package. Our customer care team is here to provide you, our valued customers with real-time support. Connect with one of our customer care agents through direct messages on WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger or live chat or follow our YouTube channel for more information. Social security at your fingertips. My Social Security Taking its name from the venerable father of the nation, the George Price Highway stretches 77 miles from Belize City to Benque Viejo. Originally built in the 1930s, this cross-country highway system is the artery that links Belize to Central America at the western border with Guatemala. That connection facilitates overland trade, supporting Belize's economic development. Winding its way across the scenic countryside, the George Price Highway, from Roaring Creek to Esperanza, has been fully reconstructed to meet international standards, with particular emphasis on road safety. A shorter and hassle-free commute is best enjoyed when everyone obeys the traffic laws. To reduce the number and frequency of road traffic accidents, it means that a seatbelt must be worn at all times, and the speed limit observed when traveling along the highway. It also means that pedestrians must use sidewalks and crosswalks where available. Buses should only board and discharge passengers at a designated bus stop. Road safety is everyone's responsibility. It begins with you. is brought to you by the Belize Bank Limited. Our country, your bank. Good evening and welcome to News 5 Live for Wednesday, April 19th. I am Sabrina Daly. We begin our newscast tonight with a decision that was handed down in the High Court earlier today by Justice Ricardo O'Neill Sancroft. 
Three former law enforcement officers have been sentenced to 15 years in prison after they were convicted of manslaughter in the beating death of a bartender in San Pedro in March of 2016. They are 28-year-old Romelia Logan, 27-year-old Radel Tech, and 27-year-old Jashimir Cobb. The men were found guilty for their role in a vicious beatdown that claimed the life of Edwin Ishpatek on the island town several years ago. This afternoon, Justice Sandcroft informed the trio that he cannot grant a non-custodial sentence and must balance the interest of society. While he did not hand down life sentences, the judge set their prison terms at 15 years before subtracting five years for their good social inquiry report as well as the time they have spent on remand at the Belize Central Prison. Notwithstanding the verdict, attorney Oscar Salgado has stated that he will be appealing that decision. On March 14, 2016, San Pedro police responded to Banyan Bay Resort, where it was reported that Edwin Ishpatek had been behaving disorderly in the sea. He was retrieved from the water by the officers who escorted him to the police station, where witnesses saw the lawmen striking him multiple times with a baton. The deadly incident was captured on video. Ishpatek was found unresponsive inside a holding cell the following day. Despite being transported to the KHMH in Belize City to undergo brain surgery, Ishpatek succumbed to his injuries. Well-known street figure Jervis Diamond Valencia was the target of a gunman earlier today when shots were fired in the vicinity of Logwood Street in Belize City. According to police in the area, officers were on foot patrol near Ebony Street when they heard reports of gunfire. When they arrived at the scene, they observed Valencia suffering from injuries to his left foot. He was transported to the KHMH for medical attention. Two bills were passed through the Senate today that will provide greater access to legal aid for persons unable to afford the service. The authority to assign attorneys for legal aid purposes falls under the Senior Courts Act. An amendment is now being made to that act that will see such powers removed from the senior courts. A newly established Legal Aid Commission will be tasked with assigning attorneys for legal aid purposes to persons unable to pay for an attorney. The specifics of the roles and responsibilities of the Commission will fall under the newly created Legal Aid Act. Both the senior court and the legal aid bills were read together inside the Senate. Lead Senator Eamon Courtney and UDP Senator Michael Perfit weighed in on the bills. The legal aid bill is long overdue. The amendment to the Senior Courts Act removes, simply removes the power of the court to assign uh, attorneys at law for, to legal aid cases. The legal aid bill for itself advances legal aid substantially in Belize by the creation of a commission that deals with the whole question of legal aid and sets out all the functions and composition. The commission, as you see, is appointed by the Chief Justice in Clause 5 and reflects different persons in the association, in the legal profession, as well as human development or social welfare. <clears throat> The duties of the Commission are set out and the extensive powers of the Commission appear in Clause 8 of the Bill. And essentially what it seeks to do is to empower the Commission to administer a comprehensive legal aid scheme for those who require legal services but are unable to afford it. What I hope to see accomplished, Madam President, is when attorneys are assigned matters and I, I can personally say I used to be the brunt of this because I started off doing criminal defense. Attorneys would be assigned a matter by the Chief Justice as the law was back then. And then an attorney would say, well, I don't do criminal law. So I have to be excused from that case. I have never done a murder case before. And so they would take all these free cases practically and put it on attorneys who only practice criminal law. Well, I used to say, 
well, before I did my first murder case, I didn't do a murder case either. I mean, you have to take responsibility. I would hope that it would be very difficult once the commission assigns you to do a particular case that you can't just say, I don't do that type of law. You can't just request your name to be removed. It has to be that if you are assigned a case and you don't want to do that case, then it is up to you to pay another attorney a fee for that other attorney to take it up on your behalf and that way you would have done your duty in terms of saying, look, I don't do that case, but I have some other lawyer who will take my place. Union Senator Elena Smith also made contributions to the debate on the amendments being made to the Senior Court Act and the passage of the Legal Aid Bill. The National Trade Union Congress of Belize is concerned that these legal aid services will be exploited by persons who are positioned to pay for their own legal services. Here is how she explained it. One of the concerns that we have, that we wish to express here, Madam President, is whether we may see less persons willing to to be on this panel and to be available and what impact that would have on those persons who are waiting trial because you know sometimes you know people it, it, it takes um, some time sometimes and people are on remand for quite a long time and this may be um, i'm not of the system so i'm just sharing you know what what we perceive to be or that could possibly be a hold back um, that maybe persons might have to wait longer to be able to get a representative or someone to represent them. I know that um, Senator Perifiz and, and Senator Kay just now shared about you know, whether these persons, some persons may be using this system to their advantage. And so we have to pay attention to, to how that works as well. Having a legal aid um, bill and all its framework um, do afford for thousands who are at risk of having their rights ignored or violated, especially when they're interacting with the criminal justice system. They now have an avenue to be able to, for their rights to be protected. Um, this, therefore, to my mind, translates into Belizeans having access to justice, whether they're poor or marginalized. And, or whether they're at disadvantage in accessing the system. So the first principle is, if you can pay for it, you pay for it. The legal aid scheme, the legal aid services, does not exist to allow persons who have the ability to hire Senator Perfit to come and say, I want legal aid and the state must pay for me. Coming up, understanding the census and its impact on economic development. Find out the details when we come back. Three years ago, I decided to provide respite care to young Jose who lives at the children's home. So now during the Easter, summer and Christmas holidays, he would come and spend time with me and my daughter at our home. Sometimes he even comes on weekends. We try to engage in as many fun activities as possible, giving him all the care and attention he deserves. Even though he is with us only part-time, he has become part of my small family, and we always look forward to spending time with him during the holidays. I could not have been happier to have made this decision. Contact the Department of Human Services and find out how you can become a foster or adoptive parent and be that heart of gold. 60% of children in Belize ages 14 and younger are living in poverty. What are the policies and programs being implemented to reduce this number? Hear from the frontliners after three-day conference to chart the way forward for social protection for all Belizeans. Tune in to Channel 5 on Thursday, April 20th, as UNICEF Belize presents the Social Protection Roundtable, a live panel discussion on social protection and poverty reduction. View it live on Channel 5 at 7.30, on our streaming, on Facebook and YouTube.
You have been a safe driver all your life when an unavoidable accident happens. But this does not mean that your insurance premium must increase. With RFNG's Accident Forgiveness Program, safe drivers will not lose their no claims discounts because of those minor unavoidable accidents. For more information on RFNG's Accident Forgiveness Program, contact us at 223-5734. When it comes to motor insurance, it pays to get it right with RFNG Insurance, a road group company. From Corozal to Toledo, Belize is a melting pot of cultures. Travel with us as we take you to a different part of the country each week in a special series called This is Our Belize, People, Food and Culture, brought to you by the Belize Tourism Board. Starting March 15th, watch the episodes on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. on the National Channel and the Belize Hotel Association Channel and at 7.30 p.m. on Channel 5 and Fridays on Love TV at 7.30 p.m. Episodes will also premiere on Thursdays on the Belize Tourism Board's Facebook page and YouTube channel. This is our Belize, people, food, and culture. In 2018, I was um, diagnosed with um, cervical 4A, stage 4A cancer. First, it was a size of a grapefruit that what the um, doctor told me. The kidney got enlarged. I couldn't do any um, chemotherapy because of the kidney. So I had to do only radiation. And I did my first session of 25. And then when, when I finished with the 25 um, sessions, I went back, she checked it, and she saw four centimeters. And I went back for the next 10 days, and after that, and she checked it again, she said, oh, it's like nothing, like nothing is there. It wasn't painful, but it's just a, it's a machine that you go under and they have like a big, like a circular. And that goes five times. It will take five minutes, five minutes to do the radiation, one session. Then you go back the next morning, another session. Well, I personally will highly recommend Galenia Hospital because of its good services, friendly staff, the doctors, very caring. Well, I just want to thank them for everything that they have done for me, you know, the, the, the staff and the doctor, especially Dr. Jamie, because she was my doctor for the radiation. No? Are you looking for low-cost television advertising? Have we got a deal for you? Advertise on Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community. Use our Daily Classifieds to recruit employees, promote specials, promote your products or services, promote a business opportunity, increase traffic to your website, and advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you to save valuable time and money. Call us today at 280-0013 or visit us at our offices on Coney Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5 Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. Tonight we are premiering our latest news product, a bi-weekly segment that we have dubbed the Five Point Breakdown. It is a comprehensive analysis of complex social, political and economic issues that are presented in an easy to understand format. Tonight's explainer journalism feature looks at the population census and its impact on economic development. The Statistical Institute of Belize is in the process of finalizing the data gathered from an exercise that was conducted in 2022. While those figures will be published later this year, News 5's Isani Kayatano delves into the topic and brings to you our inaugural episode of the Five Point Breakdown. Thank you. 
In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic forced a delay of the population census, an official counting exercise that takes place every 10 years. Since then, we have been guesstimating that Belize has a population a little north of 400,000. But what is a national survey and why is it important beyond clearly determining the number of persons living in a country? To understand the significance of the census and the impact of its findings on economic development, we turned to the Statistical Institute of Belize and asked five basic questions. Diana Castillo Trejo is the Director General at SIB. The census is every country's largest and most complex data collection activity. Um, most countries do their census every 10 years, so this is our opportunity once in a decade to collect detailed information um, on our population, on their living conditions, um, on their socio-demographic characteristics, um, on their economic activity, on their health status. So we cover a wide range of information. So how is that data useful? For that answer, we visited the Ministry of Economic Development and sat down with the Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Osman Martinez. He possesses a wealth of knowledge on how this information helps to guide the government in the making of policy decisions that benefit the people of Belize. The population census is very important. I mean, if it would left up to me, I would find funds to do it every five years. And it is very, very important to to be able to have data, such a data as the as the housing census. Economic development is the process in which people in a country become wealthier, healthier, better educated, and have greater access to good quality housing. A housing census is the official tally of all living quarters occupied or vacant in a country at a specified time. Here's an example of how that information is beneficial. Now we can understand exactly how many persons have issues with disability. We will be able to understand what is the growth of the population. Because once you understand what is the growth, your country's uh, annual growth, then you can tie that in to Belize's fiscal budget. For the financial year 2023, the government expects to collect $1.4 billion in revenue and estimates $500 million in expenses. Of the monies collected, a percentage will be set aside for the Disability Desk, an office in the Ministry of Human Development. These funds should be used to address the needs of persons living with diverse abilities. If we use the United Nations figure, it says 15% of our populations are disabled in some form. So that puts it about 60,000 people based on our 400,000 count. So basically, we as an organization, we get $1,200 from the government of Belize. We get $200, I believe, from um, the Heritage Bank. I think two or $300 from, um, from the Belize City Council. That is the extent of our funding. 53-year-old Kenrick Theos is the president of the Belize Assembly for Persons with Diverse Abilities. A few years ago, he lost both legs to a rare bone disease and is now confined to a wheelchair. Since assuming the presidency of BAPTA in June 2022, Theos has been fighting for proper representation of persons with disabilities. Their needs have been identified, but, according to Theos, the assistance being offered is pitiful. It is woefully small, it's inadequate, it's an insult. Okay? I would want to say that we need 10, 15, 20 times that. We realize that we're in, in dire straits eco as, a, as a country economically, but certain things we have to make provisions for. In the last census, they started to, and maybe before that, I'm not sure, they were counting disabled. So why do you take a count? You need to know how many are there. So what do you do with that, with that, with that information? That's an example of how data collected from a census can be used to attend to the needs of a particular group of people. Going back to our questions about the national study, I also asked the Director General of the Statistical Institute of Belize about the census information and how it helps the government 
in making policies and planning for public services. As our government seeks to plan and develop policies for the good of the population, they need to know who they're planning for. They need to know um, who they are, how they live, what their needs are. They need to know how different subgroups of the population might have different needs, how they live differently, and, and intervention, interventions might vary from one group to another. This data is important for determining the number of resources required to provide essential services. Understanding that information also means being able to implement practical solutions that can help in reducing poverty. A nation who focuses on economic development would have social programs, would understand the importance of having a good health system, a good education system, a very good citizen, citizen security program and even a sports program because it do impacts poverty reduction. Beyond the set of measures, both economic and humanitarian, that are intended to permanently lift people out of poverty, the census also aids in effective urban planning. In terms of planning for development, um, you know, the, the best plans are made on good information and the census is the richest source of this information. So everything from um, planning for how many hospitals um, need to be built in a certain district, how many classrooms the Ministry of Education has to plan ahead for, um, what parts of the country you have newly populated areas and there are need for roads and infrastructure, all of these things are informed by the census. Reporting for News 5, I am Isani Cayetano. It is estimated that more than 35,000 persons in Belize live with some form of disability. Over the years, efforts have been made to raise awareness about persons living with disabilities in Belize. There have also been initiatives geared at creating greater inclusivity in the workplace and in public spaces. But as Kenrick Theus, the president of the Belize Assembly of Persons with Diverse Abilities, has advocated on numerous occasions, there is a need for greater assistance. Today, News 5's Paul Lopez visited the Belize City home of, disabled, of a disabled man living in dire conditions. Here's that report. 68-year-old Gilbert Nathaniel was born with polio. The disease caused damage to both of his legs and that has led to a lifetime of limited mobility. But despite the odds he faces, Nathaniel has been trying to make the most of his life living inside this small wooden structure located inside an alley on Richardson Street in Belize City. For the past 10 years, this is the place he has called home. Polar vices. What's it call it? Polar vitis. That Polar was February vitis. of 1955. Okay, that's when you were born. Yeah, that was four months, four months. Three to four months, my mother. Because she was done, she was done big already, big woman. And she experienced, because she, she born wow. November the 5th, 1916. This abject living condition is far from acceptable for anyone, let alone someone living with such a disability. With no access to electricity, Nathaniel is unable to negotiate this cramped space at night. He also does not have access to water inside his home and is reliant on his neighbors for potable water. The 68-year-old stores water inside these plastic bottles that are outside, on the ground, exposed to all the elements. The air in front of his structure floods when it rains. When we come here prior to Lisa, the, the, the evening, the Wednesday evening, um, the storm swords was right, or two, was three to four feet. What did you do? Hmm? I, I, because we went from Shema, I was to go to shelter, I wanted to go to shelter. And by then, Lisa made a hit. It was at seven o'clock in the morning. But, so what did you do? Hmm? So I had to stay. The challenges of here is with the light, because with the light, especially light. Now night, I cannot see half the light food in the morning. Food or all uh, 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 like gross items, well, that's all right. But food and the roaches, the rats, and the, you know what I mean? That's how I want to get out of this house. I want to move from here. Additionally, Nathaniel's home is not equipped with a restroom. He explained that he showers at the front door. 
he relieves himself in disposable plates that he then discards in a nearby garbage. The disabled elderly man does not own a mattress or a bed to sleep on. At night, he gets whatever rest he can, sitting upright, inside this worn, rusty wheelchair. Before he said the Thursday, the Wednesday, the Wednesday night he said, he sent, sent money. He sent two to three, two hundred and three hundred dollars. Mom, the guy take long. Mm -hmm. So he tell me, courtier for money. So long time. Especially like how things are expensive now. And this is the thing, this is the thing where right they test me. When I have to get up. Especially in Chinese uh, uh, business people. When I have to get out again, yeah, take me. Well, right, 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 um, right, 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 as the money done. Kenrick Theos, the president of the Belize Assembly of Persons with Diverse Abilities, says Gilbert Nathaniel's living condition is a glaring example of society's neglect for persons living with disabilities. The Ministry of Human Development is currently in the process of improving its disability policies. However, Theos contends that this vulnerable population is not actively involved in the drafting of those policies. I want to go to a meeting where you're going to tell me that we have set out the, these, uh, the policies, this is where the money is coming from, these are who are affected and how we're going to help them. I'm not going to sit around a table, go to the Biltmore wherever and sit there for a whole day and talk about the plight of the disabled, uh, the, what advocacy work we're doing and a disability policy that we have not seen. So for me that is wrong. If you are drafting a policy for the disabled, the disabled must be included in the draft of that policy. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Lopez. After the break, Brasenio administration intent on passing FATIF's mutual evaluation exercise. We'll tell you about that, but first, here's the weather update with data from the Belize Met Service. One. Introducing Digi One Bundles. Bundle your home internet, mobile, home phone, and Digi TV services. One bundle, no hassle, exceptional value. Digi One. Digi, our national telecom. Kite flying is fun, but it can also be dangerous. Fly kite safely by following these tips. Never use wire, metallic thread, or wire reinforced strings. You could be electrocuted. Remember, even a safely built kite can cause a power outage if it gets caught in a power line. Always use paper, plastic, or wood to build kites. Never fly kites near power lines, in the path of traffic, aircrafts, or near highways. Always fly kites with a responsible adult, in open areas, in dry weather, and with clear visibility. Never attempt to remove your kite from a power line. Always call BEL at 0800-235-2273 if your kite gets caught in a power line. Belize Electricity Limited. We care about your safety. usuario de eCash, la aplicación eCash está disponible en español. Cambiar el idioma de tu aplicación de eCash de inglés a español es rápido y sencillo. 
Deja de mostrarte cómo se hace. Primero, abre tu aplicación eCash. Introduce tu PIN. Toca el icono More en la parte inferior de tu pantalla. Selecciona Security. Selecciona Language. Y luego selecciona Spanish. Vuelve a introducir tu PIN y ya está. Tu aplicación de eCash está ahora en español y puedes seguir disfrutando de tu cartera digital eCash. La aplicación eCash de Belize Bank te hace la vida más fácil. Last night, we told you about the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, evaluation exercise in Belize, and how important this is for the nation's corresponding banking relationships. Through the exercise, CFATIF is assessing Belize's legislative compliance in combating money laundering, the financing of terrorism, and the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. The task force is also seeking to determine the effectiveness of these laws. As a result, a suit of new legislations and amendments to existing legislations are being brought before the House and Senate for debate. Senator Chris Coy, the Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance, sought to explain the importance of the exercise to Belize's economy. That process really started December of last year with the on-site visit by the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force in December of this year. But as part of that process, um, or in that process, Belize will be evaluated on two main components. One is technical compliance, and the, the second is um, effectiveness. Effectiveness in enforcement of our laws as it relates to um, anti-money laundering, um, terrorist financing and pro proliferation um, financing. Now, these are some heavy issues that we have to address um, and it's a tall order on, on Belize, a small country, um, a small government. Um, but at the same time, the importance of meeting compliance, both in terms of the technical compliance as well as effectiveness, cannot be um, underscored enough. Um, we have gone through this process before. Um, there was a third round mutual evaluation process that occurred back in 2013 or thereabouts, and Belize failed. Belize failed, and what was the result of that failure? Um, there were the, the FATF, um, to its members, suggested that countermeasures be, be um, undertaken. The effect of those countermeasures um, is not a coincidence that in that same time period, Belize lost over 80% of its correspondent banking relationships, the domestic banks. Um, 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 Belize was the most effective in the entirety of the Caribbean as far as the loss of correspondent banking relationships. The nonprofit organization NPO Bill is one among a raft of legislations that the Bresenio administration is pushing through the House and the Senate to comply with recommendations being made by the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force. Social partners flagged a number of issues with the bill when it was first tabled on March 10th. Most of those concerns have since been ironed out. Senator Christopher Cui detailed those changes in a presentation that went on for almost an hour. Here are a few of his remarks on the bill and the amendments made. Section 3, whereas under the, the, the bill that came up from the House, um, the bill did not specify who would be the, the NPO registrar, this, um, we, we've gone a step further in specifying who the NPO registrar um, is and will be once this bill is passed, and that's the Director General of the Financial Services Commission. The Director General of the Financial Services Commission, by virtue of an amendment to the NGO Act recently, um, is now the registrar for NGOs. Um, the, the Financial Services Commission has the, the capacity and the competency to serve as the NPO registrar. Um, it has the financial wherewithal as well um, to serve as the NPO registrar, which is important for purposes of the FATF recommendations 
um, um, that, that um, are applicable. The NPO bill is um, intended to address um, not only technical compliance, but the uh, ability to, to meet um, if enforcement effectively. Um, the, the FATF recommendations, in particular recommendation eight, um, is specific to NPOs um, and, and provides for um, a more simplified um, process for, for um, or set of responsibilities as far as AML, um, CFT, and proliferation financing is concerned. Currently, you have um, NPOs treated essentially in the same way legally as banks and, and financial institutions. The NPO bill does, however, contain far-reaching implications for the churches as they will now be required to register as MPOs under the new law. Church Senator Bishop Alvin Moses Bengoshe argues that the MPO bill does not give consideration to the church. According to Bishop Bengoshe, the church is willing to assist the government in in complying with the international obligations being set out. But he described the bill as a creative foreign to the church. He gave the following explanation. When we look at a bill of this nature, we have to ask ourselves, how does the church fit into a bill of this nature? We are now we're asked to be listed under NPO and that which will bring us under certain restrictions. And I want to point to some of them. Case in point, where it speaks to the controller in the church, there is no such control as such in that in the church it is the bishop and it is the head of the church that if we should use this secular term who is the controller And should that person be found responsible or liable in any way, it is the controller or the bishop who is called upon to answer in that regard. And so I point that out because in other sections, section 16 and 17, of section um, um, 16 and 17 of section 2 you will find out too that when that person is found culpable um, as it reads in C, D and E you will find that that person is hauled before the court And that person, it is also indicated that um, under that section, Madam President, the head of the church and what is being asked here in that specific section is that if the person or the entity is found guilty in any way that per, that body comes under the control of the of whosoever will be put in charge of the body it means that that controller that is then seconded to the bishop or the head of the, the, the head of the church 
takes over an institution that actually the head was in the first place an ecclesiastical person not a secular controller that is asked to take control of that body senator elena smith added to the concerns of senator moses bengoche who represents the churches she questioned the impact that the MPO bill will have on schools managed by religious organizations. She explained that a number of these schools rely on fundraisers as a means of accessing the necessary finances for their daily operations. In terms of our schools, we know that our schools go through the ministry where you apply or the churches apply to operate schools and you do that through the Ministry of Education. And I am not aware that any, there is any correlation between the churches having to um, apply as, as NGO or now NPO and those schools will be listed under that application. So for us, while there may be a few schools that, are, that have been incorporated, you would understand that they would fall under this bill. But, for example, the other schools that are just managed by, us, by, by, by the churches, for example, how do we fall under this and what would be the implications? Because coming from within the school system, we understand the issues that we have in terms of finances for the school and being able to provide resources for our schools to, to operate. Like Senator Herrera, when I listened to the bishop, I googled churches money laundering. I expected to get a blank page. It wasn't a blank page. 2021, cardinals, bishops from the Vatican, where the Pope live, criminally indicted for money laundering. Next story, non-traditional church in Guatemala used to launder the proceeds of drug trafficking. I repeat, the issue here is not whether the church, whether a school, whether any non-profit organization is involved in money laundering financing of terrorism my mind went back to sanctuary bay central to sanctuary bay was something called city river wildlife reserve a non-profit totally unregulated the Bar Association of Belize has published a paper with its review of the MPO bill. In its examination, the Bar Association notes that there is no provision in the bill which expressly requires that all NPOs engaged in activities in Belize be registered under the proposed law. The publication further notes that the bill instead empowers the new NPO registrar to affect registrations and to prohibit NPOs. According to the Bar Association, an NPO which neither solicits nor raises funds from the public in pursuance of its charitable objects may not need to be registered. We will have more for you on this publication. When we return, Woman Farmer of the Year is phenomenally independent.
Do you have information about a crime or a fugitive in our community? You can submit a tip anonymously with your smartphone using this program in Safeguarding Our Community also protects your identity, keeping you out of the court system and could earn you a cash reward. Here is how it works. Download the free P3 Tips app from the Apple Store or Android Market. P3 is the provider of our secure anonymous tip collecting software. Open the app and create a PIN, but be sure to remember that number, then select your location. Next, select the type of crime. When submitting a tip, be as specific as possible. If you have a picture, video or audio that will help officers, you can upload them from your phone. Information leading to an arrest can earn you a cash reward of up to $1,000. Once your tip is submitted, you'll be given a tip ID and password. Check back if your tip leads to an arrest. You'll be told how much you were rewarded and how to anonymously collect your cash. And there was yet another mass shooting Friday night. Police have been narrowing down suspects. Meanwhile, the president will be I'm not leaving. You're pushing me. Smart introduces real unlimited postpaid plans, providing customers with unlimited talk, unlimited text, and unlimited data. Now that's a real great deal. With Smart Plus, Share 1 and 2, and Enterprise 1 and 2 plans, you can talk as much as you want, text as much as you want, and for the first time ever in Belize, you can enjoy unlimited data with your postpaid plan. So come in and sign up for an unlimited postpaid plan and enjoy limitless possibilities. In addition, other plans such as the Flex Junior, Choice and Select have been boosted with a lot more talk, text and data, providing you with the best value for your budget. Be unlimited with SMART. It's time to power your dollar with SMART. Each year, the Ministry of Agriculture names a Woman Farmer of the Year to complement its new senior and junior winners. This year's Woman Farmer of the Year, 50-year-old Esmeralda Stanley, showed us today that she is not only deserving of the recognition, but that she is certainly self-sufficient. She lives by the mantra that whatever is conceived in the mind is possible to achieve. Stanley shared how moving from Honduras to Belize for a better life landed her a job as a fruit vendor in Belize City. But something changed. She wanted to plant the fruit she sold and worked on that dream. News 5's Marion Alley and videographer Ken Roy Michael visited Stanley's farm in Trio Village, Toledo, and today filed this report. Esmeralda Stanley was born in Honduras 50 years ago, but 29 years later, she migrated to Belize in search of a better life. The single mother has found it in the wealth she has sown for herself and her four young Belizean children, toiling on a farm she now owns in Trio Village. It has not been an easy road, as she explains, but when the opportunity presented itself, she seized the moment. It entailed having to move from Belize City, where she managed a small fruit shop. In Belize City, me work hard, so one time me have it uh, one uh, fruit shop. I sell it the fruit and vegetable, so I see that everything is expensive. So one day I tell her me go uh, product this. One day, where me no no. So pass the time. 2016, I come visit trial oh. only. Uh, so my kids in school in Christian, Christian Central Christian School in Belize, city. in her city, yes. Um, so when the school close, I come, yes. I transfer my children, I come uh, trial. So in 2017, me, um, have this, no have this uh, area, no have it nothing. 
Stanley said she applied for the land she now occupies and started to plant a wide array of fruits and vegetables. Between 2017 and now, she has expanded the farm to include 35 acres of crops, including corn, rice, habanero pepper, anato, and an assortment of fruit trees. Added to those are the chickens and ducks that she also raises to sell in neighboring villages. But farming entails a lot of hard work. The area around the plants and trees need to be kept clean, and she does so manually with her machetes. Me clean only me, machete, only me and my machete. So I buy maybe 100 machetes. So when, when one machete finish, I go buy next. When next machete finish, no like it, the machete is small, so I like the big for help more. Mm. So uh, chop and chop and me chop maybe half an acre one day, put in plant. I get up every morning 3.30 okay. for my, today no school. My kids is in home, so send me, me work. Stanley has not confined her planting skills to just fruits and vegetables. She says that she has discovered a herbal brew that deals with a number of health issues, particularly one that she was diagnosed with. Plant medicinal, moringa, and uh, insulina for the people have the sugar, insulina, and, and have the medicine to cough, flu. It's good medicine, and have the medicine for the people have the uh, cholesterol, and the people have the pressure. Uh -huh. When people have the pressure and the people have the problem from the bone. So when we come from Belize, we have the big problem. So I have the big problem. So the medical associated tell me, we have a sickly cell. Sickly cell is, uh, mm -hmm, yes. So my bone is bad, bad. My feel yeah. pain in my bone. No, right now, right now me good. So I drink the, this plant, uh -huh. seven plant, cook and drink and drink and drink, the pain gone. Aside from the money she earns by selling her fruits and vegetables, Stanley also finds the time to care for two other children beside her own. From the money she makes by selling her produce, she invests in their farmhouse. She is trying to expand. I sell the, 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 the coconut water for buy the sin. Uh, sell sweet the coconut and and everything we sell it for buy the the thing for my house i put in the bucket in my bicycle me gun and me buy bicycle and sell it sometimes we have it lot at uh, sour sap me put in two bucket full of the sour sap and every day me gun i uh, sell it so yes. every day me gonna sell it a bella vista or, or a mango creek she has also proven to be self-reliant in other physically challenging skills. When the need arose for her to find a water source for her home, she dug this 20-foot deep well all by herself, she says. And when she finished, she used a rope to pull herself back out. And now that she sees the need to add a shed to rest on hot summer days, she is doing so herself. For her, the successes she is starting to see were never part of the dream she had when she had just arrived here. Belize is now everything to her. When we come, me not think me have it one time, one farm. No. So when me and my husband leave, I tell her he, Please let's go a uh, uh, buy one seat in jungle. He said, No, why? So me ha, me one live in the jungle. He said, No, too much mosquito, he said me. So one day so me uh, he uh, he got an ex woman so now me have it so I love more Belize now. <laughs> so I have my children Belizean, so I have this wow I 
ne va a estar ahí en mi copa con duras, no man, no. Ne va a mi one go back, no. I like, this is my country, my home, my everything. For this woman farmer of the year, nothing is impossible, as she has shown us in only one day's visit at her farm. In Spanish, Sam, ¿cómo se dice? Si se puede. If you can do it. Yes. Si se puede. Yes. A strong woman. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> Reporting for News 5, I'm Marion Ali. Belize District is often referred to as the vegetable basket for urban market. Thousands of pounds of edible plants that are consumed daily are produced by many cooperatives just off the old Northern Highway. Today, a News 5 team traveled to Bomba, a farming community outside of Mascal Village. The Bomba United Farmers Cooperative hosted an onion field day where stakeholders as well as students were engaged about the research and management of onion production from the field to the table. News 5's Dwayne Moody reports. It is used in almost all foods across many cultures to add flavor and textures to soups, salsas and sauces, including topping for hot dogs, and is the main ingredient for escaveche. In Belize, thousands of pounds of onions are consumed daily. About 75% of the market is produced locally, and the rest is imported. We used to be a net importer of onions, potatoes, uh, carrots. That has changed. We are now uh, importing far less onions than we used to do in the past. I think right now we are almost at 75% self-sufficiency in onions. So only a couple months of the year, we have to import onions. And potatoes the same, carrots are the same. We're producing carrots now 10 months of the year. And so we are, we are moving towards uh, self-sustainability in, in these products. We want to reach a point where we can have not only quantity, but quality. Quality to export because we want to export to Salvador and Guatemala, but we have to ensure that we have the quality, right? And not only for the export, but Belizean deserve the best too. Today, an onion field day was hosted in Bamba, a farming village in Belize district of the Old Northern Highway. 19 members of the Bamba United Farmers Cooperative produce a wide variety of vegetables and onion is among one of its main products. But last year, due to various factors, the group had to test out new varieties of onions that can adapt to the changing climate. Many of the farmers, uh, they, they presented a, a, a list of losses because they planted seed of varieties of seeds that, that uh, were unknown for them. So uh, as they planted the onion, they, they noticed that uh, from the beginning, the, the plant was not going well. So when they, when they harvested, they didn't harvest it what they expected. And so the cooperative turned to four agro-services that have come in and provided 25 varieties, 90% that is good for the area. These varieties include the white, yellow and purple onions. We as a cooperative, we normally produce between 18 to 20 acres. But this year we have 18.8 .8 acres, uh, in which we approximately will harvest about over 300,000 pounds this year. That is for the Belize city market? Uh, it is for the whole country. Uh, when we enter the market, uh, it's because the local uh, farmers, they don't have no more onion. So that's when we come in to the market. So, for example, last year, BNDC came to us and bought all the onions and they shared it to the whole country. Among the agro-service providers is AgriPrec, a company out of Cayo that has been on the ground assisting the cooperative with the management of onion production. Elmer Herrera is an agronomist with the company. He says that there are specific products and solutions recommended to control different pests. We have products, we have, the, we have from the seed till it, when the product gets on the, on, on, on the market, you know, where, where the consumers that buy it. So um, we have a lot of products. We have um, fungicides, we have um, herbicides, we have um, insecticides, we have um, fertilizers, we have a um, lot of products. We have from seeds, onion seeds, vegetables, um, we have uh, 
tomatoes, we have watermelons, we have melons. So we have, I, I think we're pretty much in everything. Everything that the farmer needs, I'm pretty sure they can find it at Agriprec. We have the, um, the UPL um, agronomists as well coming from abroad into Belize and, and helping out the farmers. I, and I believe that is our strong point for, for Agriprec, that uh, we visit the farmers and it's free of charge. If, if a farmer would call us and, and ask for assistance, we would go straight to their farm and help them out with whatever they need. Dwayne Moody for News 5. Earlier today, News 5 caught up with Minister of Agriculture, Jose Abelardo Mai in Bomba Village, and we asked for an update on the situation between Belize Sugarcane Farmers Association and American Sugar Refinery, Belize Sugar Industry. As we've been reporting, the parties have been at odds over an unresolved commercial agreement. And today, News 5 confirmed that the Millers may have made the situation worse. Reports are that a representative from Fair Trade is in Belize and met with the association to reveal that the quota of 40,000 tons of sugar from Belize was purchased by Fair Trade for last year's crop and this year at premium price. But it would appear that of the four Cane Farmers Association in the north, BSCFA did not get its share of the proceeds. From the information we've been gathering also and from uh, the discussions it uh, it is confirmed I should say that 40,000 tons of sugar was sold this is from the 2022 crop was sold uh, with a fair trade premium BSCFA did not receive uh, any fair trade premiums for that year and this year, I think that they have sold also a portion of the sugar with the fair trade premium. But again, the farmers have not received, the BCFA have not received their share of the pie. The, reason, the reasons that they have written to the BCFA was one, that they are not sharing similar views, that's one of the excuses. Um, two, that there has to be greater collaboration between the BSAFA and BSI ASR. But the question being asked by the farmers is, if you sold my sugar and received a premium, then why am, am I not being paid for it? Or why is it that that premium was paid out to a different association? So the BSCFA are making those questions, bold questions. They have not gotten the right answers, they believe. And so this matter is ongoing. And so the farmers, again, were at a very difficult difficult point right now because at the moment there's no law to say okay Kate and Lyle you sold this sugar you sold 40,000 tons right and it's important to understand that within those 40,000 tons there is a portion of that sugar which belong to BSCFA you have collected the premiums but you have not paid them. Right? And you have said to them that you have made payments, you have purchased sugar, but you will not, they will not receive your premiums. But what law exists that determines that the miller must compensate all farmers after selling sugar to fair trade at a premium price? Agriculture Minister Jose Abelardo Mai says that at this time, there is none. It's a matter that came up in Cabinet on Tuesday. The problem that we have in the country is that there is no law that binds fair trade um, premiums. There is no binding law that obliges ASR, BSI or Ketan Lyle to pay the farmers, even though they have sold 
the sugar at premium prices as the farmers believe is the case. So what do we do next? If I come to you and say to you, I will I need your permission to raise funds to raise funds abroad to send your child to university and then I do so, you authorize me to do so, and I raise the funds and take those funds and give it to somebody else, then I will leave that for you to decide what you will refer to that what you refer to that as. But this is where we are. Um, there are a number of also conditions that Ms. Julia Clark um, is requesting of the farmers, saying we can re-engage, but if you comply with A, B, C, D, E, and F, and the farmers believe that they have complied with everything that is requested by FlowCert, which is the policing agency of fair trade. I do not believe that anybody wants their name out there in the media being dragged as Malpago or that you took my stuff and not paid me for it. I think the attorneys will refer to it as obtaining by deception. Is that the term? I'm not an attorney. I, 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 I was never good at at these things. I'm an agronomist. But the legal people will call it all kinds of technical terms. But I agree with you that it does not look good. And I think that it has to be addressed. No. How do we address it? It's a different matter. And so cabinet has been discussing it for hours and uh, there may be things that we have to do as a government to ensure that the interests of farmers are safeguarded um, because today it can be BSCFA and tomorrow it may be the other associations and therefore tomorrow it will be somebody else right? Just as we need to safeguard the interest of the investor in the country, in this case ASR, we need to safeguard the interest of the farmers. Up next, the opening of the second CCAD Regional Environmental Congress. Environmentally degradable plastics, or EDP, are plastics that are affected by a combination of environmental conditions that cause the plastic to break down within an acceptable time frame. They are specifically designed to degrade into carbon dioxide, water, and other biomass substances. The level of breakdown can vary based on standard test methods appropriate to the plastic. Click on the link below to see what you can do to help end the nightmare of single-use plastics. I'm Alison Castillo and now you know. just got a lot less complicated with Belize Bank Contactless MasterCard Debit Card. Introducing our standard debit and MasterCard Platinum Debit Cards. Now you can make purchases anywhere MasterCard is accepted with one tap, pay and go. Your contactless card never has to leave your hands, especially in these times. And your card is embedded with multiple layers of security. Platinum card holders get to enjoy extra benefits like price protection, purchase protection, trip inconvenience and luggage protection, just to name a few. Start enjoying a cashless lifestyle today with the Belize Bank. Sign up for a smart share plan and save big. Whether you're a small entrepreneur starting up your business, a student on a limited budget, or a family trying to save, this is the plan for you. 
With unlimited SMS, calls, and data, we help you save. Get up to five lines for as low as $30 per line monthly, only with Smart. Sign up today at any Smart showroom or sales manager countrywide. So get your business going, share more memories with friends, and be ready for the day with Smart. At this time, the opening ceremony of the second Central American Commission for Environment and Development Regional Environmental Congress is concluding at the Princess Ramada Hotel in Belize City. It is being held under the theme in Interregional Unity, Enhancing Human Security and Environmental Resilience. As pro tem president of CICAD, Minister of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management, Orlando Habet, gave the opening remarks ahead of the ministerial panel discussion. Belize is honored to host the second regional congress to serve as a dedicated space for sharing information, experiences, lessons, and knowledge management on the region's main environmental issues. The conference is, of course, happening at a time when our countries are facing multiple challenges relating to limited economic growth, pollution, biodiversity loss, and the incremental adverse effects of climate change further compounded by inflation resulting from disruptions in value chains. Thus, today's challenges demand more than ever integration, cooperation, and partnership, all of which have been central to the overcoming of these common challenges faced by all present. Through our partnership, we have developed and implemented numerous projects and programs, creating a community of change. Belize's constitution, as it is, speaks about human security and environmental protection. And in a national context, the country has a national climate change policy and strategic plan, which looks at 13 sectors that have direct links to the environment. Minister Orlando Habed says that the Congress looks at targets embedded within the Sustainable Development Goals. Enhancing human security and environmental resist resistance or resilience are targets embedded within our Sustainable Development Goals. When speaking about enhancing human security and environmental resilience, one must remember that targets are interconnected and achieving one will be interdependent on achieving the other. Several studies, like that produced by the Environmental Performance Index, the EPI, by the Yale Center for Environmental Policy and Law and the Center for International Earth Science Information Network at Columbia, have found that economic and social prosperity is directly associated with a cleaner environment. The general objective of this Congress is therefore to strengthen regional collaboration for natural resource management, continued economic empowerment and sustainable development in Central America and the Dominican Republic. The specific objectives include to present the results of the main regional initiatives, programs and projects that CCAD and its strategic and cooperation partners are implementing as part of the regional environmental strategy known in Spanish as ERAM for the sound management and protection of natural resources in the countries of Central America and the Dominican Republic, especially those shared among the countries, and to promote the exchange of information, experiences, lessons learned, knowledge management, and south-south and triangular cooperation on the region's main environmental issues. The Congress includes various technical sessions which will be held on Thursday. Those sessions include presentations on water management from a watershed to sea approach, 
water security for the Sika region, the implementation of water management instruments, and the role of the private sector. There will also be sessions about the Mesoamerican reef eco-region and the lessons learned on the stony coral tissue loss disease, the Blue Bond Agreement of Belize, and a panel discussion on regional initiatives. And that's the news. Tonight's broadcast is available at channel5belize.com, on our Facebook and on YouTube. I'm Sabrina Daly. Thanks for joining us. And from all of us here at News 5, good night.